Hi, this is Doug Smith, and I have another experiment for you. In this case, it's another scope hack. How do I measure a voltage? In this case, it's going to be like 10,000 volts RMS. If I don't have a probe suitable for measuring, all I've got is the normal kind of 10x IZ probe. So let's take a look. Here on our table here is our experiment. Um, and you've seen this before to charge up. There's a big uh, 15... 1,000 picofarad 50 kilovolt capacitor that weighs about 50 pounds on the floor under the table. And you've seen me charge that up before and do some zapping, but that's not the point of today. Today I want to show how I can measure the response of this power supply. This is a uh, uh, cool, cool neon, neon power supply. These aren't just transformers anymore. It's a 10 kilovolt, 30 milliamp, and it's uh, UL approved. It's uh, basically 32 kilohertz power supply coming out of here and it cuts off in about 100 milliseconds or so um, if it doesn't see any uh, signal so let's uh let's look at how we can measure this so here's the setup at first i'll just run it into an open circuit here here's a little circuit i'll show you what it is in a second here's the capacitor terminals down there on the floor you can see that in my other video um, i'll use it for loaded charge up uh, but right now we're going to start off with open circuit and and here's our schematic of a test setup and then i'll show you the equipment we're going to use so we have the neon sign power supply 32 kilohertz switcher and we center this up a little better um, a little any two neon light bulb not connected to anything it's just near this lead here and it lets me know the power supply is on it ignites and, and lights up even without being connected uh, you probably won't be able to see that on the camera, though. It's too small. Then I've got four 20 kilovolt diodes. So this will be uh, 10,000 volts. will be 15,000 volts peak. It'll charge up the cap to 15,000. And the total reverse voltage will be 30,000 volts trying to break over these diodes. I'm always very conservative in my design, so I've got 80 kilovolts worth of diodes here. A 1,000 ohm 2-watt carbon comp resistor to uh, limit current. A small spark gap. When the capacitor gets up, that forces an open circuit eventually, so I don't have to worry about whatever the reserve, re reverse leakage of these diodes are. And that forces the power supply to turn off uh, sometime after the capacitor is charged up. That way the power supply is not on continuously, and I get myself across that. I think uh, 10, 30 milliamps, 10,000 volts, that would be uh, that would be quite a zap. Uh, this current limits the, also this volt resistor, I should say, limits the current into the capacitor helps these diodes a little bit. And the question is, that forms a time constant. Before this thing cuts off, do I get this thing charged up? And we're going to find that out, even though I don't have a probe suitable for measuring it. Down here on the table is a, is a uh, 1 gigahertz, 4 picofarad, roughly Tektronix 10x IZ probe. It's a couple inches from, from the wire here. And um, not connected, just laying there. So in terms of equipment, Where's our uh, screen there? But in the back is a Tektronix MDO 4104B6 mixed domain oscilloscope. And uh, if I look at the screen here, we're on 50 volts per division. I might change that to 100. Two milliseconds per division. Um, and then, um, so at 850, it's 200, uh, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 volts full scale. Um, Remember, the probe's just laying on the table near this thing. So I'm going to turn on the power supply uh, into an open circuit, and we'll do this a couple times, see what happens. And there was the trigger. Maybe I should, uh, there we go. First of all, um, we were at the high peak of the 32 killer, so it's charging things up right away. Although the first peak isn't as big. Let me uh, make this 100 volts per division. Uh, this is going up here somewhere. So eventually it charges up within a couple of 60 hertz. These are the 60 hertz waves. This thing apparently doesn't have a filter capacitor inside the power supply. And here's the 32 kilohertz. And it's hitting right at the top of one of the AC waves, but it doesn't quite get to full voltage. Before we get on the second cycle, it looks like it's charged up. If I expand that out, you can see the 32 kilohertz of the power supply. Uh, let me... Uh, let me try it again and see where we go here. Partially, we're partially up on the 60 hertz waveform. 
So one of these times I'm going to get lucky. Uh, okay. Position right at the top of the 60 hertz again. I want to get it on the zero crossing. Again, right at the top of the 60 hertz. Halfway up, but it's, it's impressive if I can get this right under the zero crossing. Here we go. We're not having good luck here today. I should probably raise the, the trigger point a little bit. Uh, I think we have what we were looking for. Yes. We, we got it near the zero crossing. And so it's loading down the power supply. Notice the this slope is faster than this one. and But pretty much by the end of the first cycle, it's charged. Actually, it's not charged up. We're not charging up the, the uh, capacitor. This is just the different open circuit. Here we started low. And notice this slant, this slope is near this as the power supply comes up. So now, that's the open circuit. And these are 60 hertz. Uh, cycle the um, power raw AC power not being filtered this is 100 volts per division so we're seeing about almost 300 but we are seeing 300 volts here uh, into the probe now having seen it start up in different parts of the AC waveform let's hook this up on the uh, oops, on the capacitor here This is where we'll get good. So now we've seen it start at all kinds of points on this waveform here. And uh, pretty much looks all the same, but it just depends on where we start. Now I'm going to turn it on, having that big capacitor to charge up. Okay. Uh, looks like we cut off a little bit there. But you can see. Unfortunately, this is off the end of the screen. You can't see it. But look, it's starting out. It's, it's starting to ooze up. It only got part way up. And then on the next one, it got further up. Let's see if we can't bring that trigger further back here and redo it. Now, of course, now i got to discharge the capacitor because it's open circuit right now. So I can do one of two things. i got a 2K resistor. Uh, if I don't use the resistor... I don't know if you saw the flash on the screen, but you probably heard it, and my ears are ringing now. Uh, let's try it again. This is fun, zapping things. Here we go. Ah, perfect. We don't come right up like we did before, because that big capacitor is loading down the power supply. It's sort of oozing up here slowly. It gets here, not quite full charge. On the next one, it's almost there. By the time we get to the, to the third cycle of 60 hertz, we're pretty much charged up. And at four milliseconds, this goes on for a long time. Um, uh, I think last time we said something on the order of 90 or 100 milliseconds. So it's charging up in the first couple cycles. And um, and my question in my mind was, is that 1K resistor in series with the cap too big to keep it from charging up? And clearly it's not. Let me give you a, a longer time scale look at this. Let's see, that's 20. Let's do 40 milliseconds per division. And I think I'm discharged. I'm going to do it through the resistor this time so I don't make such a big zap. There you go. Um, 40, so it's about 100 milliseconds long, and you can see that the charging happens here. Once we get over here, we're in good shape. Maybe I should uh, try it again here. Um, we're getting pretty slow here, so we're not sampling very fast. 20 milliseconds, 5 kilosamples. Um, but I need to discharge the capacitor again to do it through this resistor. And we get that big, huge spark. It sounds like a gun going off. I'm going to get the SWAT team here. Here we go. There we go. And you can see the, the slow charge up here. And But by the time I get to the third 60 cycle, uh, I'm done. So my 1,000 ohm resistor is not preventing it from charging up. we get lots of time after that. And then once it's charged up, the spark gap stops. Uh, opens, disconnects the power supply from the capacitor. I don't have to worry about reverse uh, leakage or capacitance or anything. And the capacitor then shuts off. The power supply shuts off over here. So I can tell a lot about this. Um, I can see it charging. I can see that I'm, I've got plenty here before the power supply switches off. All kinds of things I can see without even having a probe that I need to look at this waveform. 
In fact, if I did put the probe right on the circuit, since it's a fairly high impedance circuit, it might, uh, it might load things down a little bit. But there we go. Take a few tries to get it right, but that's life in the lab. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching this, and uh, let me know what you think of it. Thanks.